Okay, one more on um, social engineering. Um, drifting a little bit off the topic of uh, uh, education and training itself, but uh, an example, um, somewhat complicated, I admit, of uh, analysis and uh, uh, possible remediation uh, using social engineering. Now, uh, one of the other hats that I wear is emergency management. I mean, there's, there's an awful lot of uh, similarities in, in the term, in, in uh, uh, the, the skills, the training, the experiences, uh, processes and tools involved in, uh, say, risk assessment and uh, business impact assessment. Um, between uh, uh, incident response, um, business continuity, and uh, emergency management uh, itself. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of crossover there. Um, uh, you know, I'm a specialist, and, and I've been teaching uh, business continuity for uh, a great many years, and and for almost as many years I've been. Uh, volunteering with emergency management teams. So, uh, in emergency management, we are attuned to disasters. I mean, you know, it's our bread and butter. And we, we know that people um, during a disaster, uh, in, in, you know, any kind of a disaster, you see two things. You see the, the people who are trying to help and, uh, you know, it, it does your heart good to, to see that. And you see the people who are trying to take advantage of the situation. And there's all kinds of, of issues there. I mean, uh, uh, one of the things that I'm doing, as I mentioned, is uh, doing these online uh, security seminars in regard to spam. And uh, one of the slides that I show people have uh, things about uh, the fighting in Ukraine. And, uh, you know, these... these spam messages that come out, you know, send support to Ukraine. And, and, of course, you know, they're asking you to send money. And, of course, they never send any of it to Ukraine. They just, you know, keep it all themselves. It's a fraud. It's a scam. Um, an unfortunate one because it's, you know, taking advantage of people's generosity, taking advantage of a, a bad situation, and, uh, you know, just trying to turn in a profit on, on misery. So, uh, there's that. But, uh, the pandemic was different. The pandemic seemed to give everybody license to be on their absolutely worst behavior. There was a racism that we saw going on. There was a violence on the streets. There was uh, the fact that we don't have political discourse anymore. It's just, you know, name-calling and fighting and slagging each other, and, and uh, it's been awful, uh, you know, it's, uh, so all of this misbehavior, and of course that is way too weak a term, but we don't have any other, um, is, uh, you know, uh, definitely tied to the pandemic, and I was uh, uh, mentioning my disappointment over this, to a friend and her immediate response was well they're all grieving now I am a grieving widower I recently lost my wife and as a bereaved person that immediately clarified the situation yes of course that is the case uh, a loss is a loss during the pandemic everybody has lost something you know, maybe it wasn't a close friend or family member who died. Um, maybe they lost a job. Maybe they just lost opportunities. Maybe they just lost the ability to go down to the pub anytime they wanted to for a beer, whatever it was. Somebody, you know, everybody has lost something. And a loss is a loss. Now, okay, we look at this through the grief lens with our social engineering hats on 
and see that in in grief, um, there's uh, you know the five Kubler-Ross stages. Well, that was applicable to the dying, anyways, not the grieving. And uh, it was never meant to be sort of a process model. Uh, it was just meant to be categories. So anyway, the there nowadays uh, the grief industry tends to say everybody grieves in their own way, but there are similarities. Number one, the most common symptom of grief is uh, sleep deprivation. Now, what does sleep deprivation do? It kills your, well, it degrades anyways, your, uh, your critical thinking capabilities. You know, you, you're without sleep. You are not uh, uh, going to be thinking as clearly and as effectively. So, uh, you know, just keep that in the back of your mind as we go through the rest of them. Number two is definitely anger. People are angry when they have lost something. They, they are angry over the loss. Now, uh, our minds are not very good at identifying even what emotions we are feeling, let alone what is causing those emotions. And uh, one of the uh, things that our brains do, uh, which is not always accurate, is try to find a reason for what it thinks we're feeling. And like I say, what it thinks we're feeling. Sometimes, it, it, you know, any, any form of arousal type emotion, uh, it, people can be very easily fooled into thinking they're feeling something else. But anyway... You know, there's a lot of anger around, um, and a lot of it's legitimate that there there have been losses. Um, but of course, the brain tries to find a more specific reason. It's that person over there wearing a pink shirt. Those people with pink shirts—they're terrible. You know, it's that person over there with a short haircut. Those people with short haircuts—they—they're the ones who are causing all the problems. You know, so. We are feeling this anger, and the anger is always, you know, some group, some person, some political party, some philosophy, whatever it is, you know, somebody is causing it, and so we are attacking those people without really analyzing whether or not that is actually the case. Um, now, unfortunately, you know, our brains were built for fight and f or flight. Uh, they were not built for subtlety, um, and we haven't yet evolved to the point where we can really uh, identify this, this stuff uh, too accurately. So, uh, anyway. Uh, now, d uh, to go on, uh, a third is loneliness. Really extreme loneliness, and, and boy have I experienced that. Um, it's... Uh, it's rather amazing. But anyway, um, the thing is that we have seen a lot of people joining conspiracy theories. Not because they believe this necessarily, just so that they can belong to a group. Again, so that it alleviates the loneliness that they are feeling. And... Uh, you know, so so you look at these things, you know, yeah, that explains this, you know, the, this misbehavior that we are seeing. The, the cults, the conspiracy theories, the anger, the, the rage um, that is going on in society. It's all about grief. Okay, now we've identified it. What can we do? Well, fortunately, we do, we are starting to understand a bit more about grief. We uh, we don't deal with it particularly well, uh, I must say, and that's some of the research that I've done over the past uh, year or so. But the um, we we do have some tools, and so we could turn those tools um, on a societal level and and you know try and address people's grief and the feelings that are being. Uh, engendered there and hopefully try and correct some of the misbehavior.